right, so welcome to storyboard figure drawing, uh, or storyboard figure, figure drawing practice we're going to be doing today. Um, what you're seeing on the right is the main thing we're going to be sourcing right here for, like, stuff we're going to be doing. It's a massive, uh, the Fluby Newbie storyboarding on mega, mega post has been around for years, like, going back to, like, my college days, and it's, like, expanded and stuff. Uh, so this is full of stuff to dig into and study from uh, for storyboard artists. Not just storyboard artists, though. Like, a lot of stuff in here applies to, like, animators and comic book artists and other things, too. Um, but here's the uh, resource for it. Now, the main stuff we're going to be focusing on for today is this, this right here, which is a Grizz and Norm uh, Tuesday Tips page, actually. Um... And there is, I'll check that out, there's some templates and stuff that's neat. And um, uh, I guess, and maybe this page too, a little bit, but um, like the main things we're gonna be work, we're gonna be concentrating on would be like these two images here, I would say, and let me scroll down to this. There's this one mega image. Uh, we're gonna look at, look at some of this stuff too. Uh, we're gonna actually look at more of the actual like compositional stuff tomorrow on uh, sat uh tomorrow on saturday and uh i am muted in my discord but not in twitch so let me unmute myself in discord there we go and i'm unmuted in discord i've been talking on twitch uh but i didn't unmute on discord anyway so just to review real quick these two images right here in particular from the plumy Nui document are two of the images we're going to be concentrating on today uh, we're scrolling past some of the images we're going to, we might touch on, but we're going to be concentrating on for tomorrow for like more compositional stuff. Here's another one. All right, here one of, I'll link the I'll link all these by the way, in both the chats for the individual images. Um, and let's see here. Stuff further down. There's a bunch of like stuff on draftsmanship. But we'll just like kind of scroll past a lot of this because like there's a lot of things in here that I haven't seen because I haven't looked at this thing fully. Um, and I'm, so we'll pull the stuff from it that I know is going to be useful for us. But there's like one image in particular in here that's like this giant mega post image that will come into huge handy. I'm going to grab this just for completeness. But we might need to use that one today. There you go. These are good. These are good. Line of action. Oops. This 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 um again i'm going to make sure i link all these for everyone all right here's the draftsmanship one the draftsmanship make it post that one's a big one we're going to be concentrating on right here this giant thing let me see where it ends it ends with that okay so I'll put down this, and let me see if I can find the other post that this is a part of. This is a different thing on cinematography, I think. Yeah, it is. But those are two great, huge mega posts. We'll be using here some Walt Stanchfield stuff, I believe, and some other things. going to yoink all this because I'm going to, I'm actually going to yoink all this for pure ref, but let me show you the main stuff we're going to be concentrating on. Okay. Well, anything, anything in here that first off that is like related to figure or character drawing, I want you to take a look at and note stuff about like even stuff like this, for example, like noting the line of action of uh, different Disney poses and stuff. Like, uh, but like the main stuff we're going to be concentrating on today will be stuff like this. I'll just make a little pure ref file for this. Stuff like this, that, this, this. Wow, that's a really huge post. There's a lot of stuff on this, actually. I more, way more than I bargained for in this. It's about five, it's like about one, two, three. That's a lot of stuff right here. But yeah, there's a lot of good stuff on there. Um, so I'm not going to use that. We'll use this though. This. 
this. Don't worry, I'll be I'll be like uh linking the Pure Ref is a free piece of software. Some someone was asking about like I do have to pay money for this. Um Pure Ref is a free piece of software uh that you'll be able to download this stuff. Uh download uh and uh use for what I'm using it for right now, which is like yoinking stuff from the web or from your hard drive to like put into a like kind of a mood board, basically of stuff to utilize. I mean there's more stuff beyond this to yoink, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna grab everything. And you can look on screen to get kind of an overview and get an idea of like some of the things we're gonna be doing tonight. And then tomorrow we're going to be we're going to be doing more of this tomorrow at my two thirty class, but it's going to be focused on like um, applying this stuff into like making actual functional storyboard panels and stuff. All right, I think that's enough for that. Um, maybe I can full screen this, bring up the ref, save the file first. Saving that file. Organize this real quick and optimize it. It's not going to be the best to optimize because of these huge ass things. Uh, let's see here. Okay, let's optimize, save. And then uh, now we'll, I will export it to Discord. So this piece of uh, study material is going to go, whoops. It's going to go into the drawing corner chat for now. Let's see, storyboarding. Go, and now that's a giant ass file, Jesus Christ. Okay, if, if this one doesn't upload, um, uh, I'll use Google Drive again. I think I'll, I'll preemptively do that. All right, while we're waiting for that to upload, let's take a quick look at the stuff that we're going to be going over today. So we got this giant image right here. Uh, it's actually probably better if I open that in browser. Let's see here. So it was this image in particular right here, the draftsmanship image right here. We'll just put that there and then that there and then good we're good to go i think let's scoot that over here a bit all right so uh draftsmanship purely focusing on the quality and uh, the quality of and speed of your artistic abilities here's the learning order for drawing you probably want to learn uh drawing human characters there aren't easy ways but there sure are difficult and frustrating ways the most common mistake is to skip the basics that lay the foundation. Results can be seen on the left. Uh, another common mistake is to practice too, uh, too many fields at the same time. Let's face it, you can't draw anything satisfactory until you see, you see some efforts and practice. There's a lot to learn. You can make things a little easier if you focus on the right fields. In this tutorial, I'll explain the order in which it's most beneficial to start, uh, uh, start and advance in human character drawing, in my opinion, that is. Focus points in practicing. And here's the uh, here's this kind of the order of at which you practice. So, so uh, a lot of us here are at different levels 
in like what, where we're practicing. And some of us have skipped around in these. Uh, and this is just this guy's opinion on how, how best to advance through this stuff. Because like this, this, this a lot of this stuff from what I'm seeing uh, inherently builds on itself. Um, so uh, techniques and uh, that, that number one, like we've gone over that a little bit. Remember those little, little drawing drills for anyone who was here uh, for like my Monday class or my, my Wednesday class. Actually, even my Monday class for that matter. Uh, we went over like those kind of like um, those kind of drawing drills like this where we do like we create two dots around the page at certain points and then we draw. We try to draw like a, a quick line between them as best you can to sort of like warm up your aim basically and your ability to like make a straight line or whatever. That and like curves and like practicing the CSI of C curve, S curve, and straight. Um, practicing boxes and stuff. And ellipses. And uh, act adding endpoints to gesture lines, for example, like a cubic endpoint there and then like a cylindrical endpoint there. Stuff like that. And uh, let's see what else. And there's lots of like other things that we did. But yeah, ellipses. It's a big one. Ellipses. It's a little bit hard to do it on uh, how cramped I have. Uh, how cramped I have the, the drawing pad on the screen right now. Like I need to be more center to get a good angle for these ellipses. But you get the idea. But yeah, I mean like that kind of stuff. And like uh, basics, everything from line shapes formed. Uh, like the first thing, like the techniques is about like holding your arm, how you hold your arm and stuff, and, like, how you're able to, like, record strokes and so on. Uh, basics is um, everything from lines, arc shapes, forms, volume, light, and shadow. Volume and light and shadow, of course, is something that we might want to cover a little bit more in the future, I think. But, um, but yeah, like, uh, lines and shapes and the perspective, like, depth cues and orientation, the position of space, perspective tools, etc., uh, we're going to go over some more perspective stuff tomorrow. We'll touch on it a bit today, I think, in relation to figure drawing. But yeah, that one will be a big thing for tomorrow, I would say. Perception, uh, the ability to see how elements are related to each other, such as symmetry, involves analyzing your drawings for errors. Yes, that's a big one. That involves flipping your drawing and scrutinizing it and checking it for errors and stuff. Um, these are the prerequisites, mind you. Uh, the prerequisites that, like, if you're kind of weak in a certain area in this, like, you can probably go into these phases here when you're kind of weak in some of these areas here. You just want to, like, go back and kind of shore up and uh, practice those things to get better at them, too. Uh, general practice five, proportions, which is very general anatomy scales, relationship between body parts, joint, articulation, limitations, etc. Six, body parts, practicing individual body parts. Now, we've done a little bit of six. Um, we did that on... Uh, we did that on um, Wednesday, and we actually I kind of did that on, on Monday too, because we practiced heads, and we practiced um, uh, we practiced uh, legs and hips on Wednesday. So this proportions uh, very general anatomy scales in relationship between body parts, joint articulation, and limitations. That might be an area where we're probably going to want to focus going going into like future sessions like these like. I want to maybe see if we can like really start concentrating on proportions because I think that's going to be a big thing that people are going to have to like get more intuitive, including myself, because my proportions are kind of whack. Uh, on that note, um, there is an image I have, which is a excellent proportional guide, which I think is from Kevin Chen from Concept Design Academy, but he's uh, got an excellent. Oops, he's got an excellent. Um, study aid that he used for his classes that he gave permission for um, Costa, who's our Discord of Ben, who took his class. He, he got permission from him to share this image, which I'm going to put on screen. Um, this image right here. And this is a this is a good proportion image. If you can print out this image or have it somewhere near for you, near, near you to refer to, do that. Um, have this near you and maybe try copying it. Maybe try doing like some draw over stuff digitally or tr with tracing paper or something on it. Start to like get the start to get these generic me measurements 
uh, memorized of this figure. You want to keep these measurements in the back of your head and for any figure that you're use or any figure that you're doing. In fact, like I think the first thing that we will do to warm up is we're going to run through reconstructing basically not doing a drawover. We're going to reconstruct this guy uh, proportionately using the measurements that are laid out on this page. That'll be the first thing we do tonight. After that, we will get into a little bit of gesture drawing uh, using the proportion stuff that we have in mind from this. So that's what we'll be up to this evening. We'll be also taking a look at, look, we're gonna be skipping a little bit ahead today to kind of loosen up a bit on like what you can do with this stuff when you get more fluent with it. But yeah, so that's where we're gonna be focusing today. We're gonna to focus on proportions and we'll do a little, we'll dip into a little bit of posing and we'll probably use a little bit of some of the body parts practice that we've been doing Monday and Wednesday. So let's see, proportions, body parts, poses, details. Uh, advanced, and then there's advanced studies. Like, so this green area right here is where all of us are mainly concentrating. But there's a little bit like, a, like, you're supposed to concentrate on these different things and get them done right and in practice them in order in terms of importance. But you can skip around a bit and uh, it, it doesn't have to be Perfect. This, this is just like a suggestion. So uh, we are. So you will probably see us maybe dip in a little bit into orientation of figures and body language and body types and a little bit of anatomy. But like all of these things, like all of these things are going to be working together in concert as you get better. Um, uh, like. These areas, uh, these areas are broken down here for you for you to figure out what to focus on, uh, and to focus on getting right. Because it's tough to try to do everything at once. Like it's better like if you're kind of poopy at like say your quality or you're poopy at um, some of the other things here, but you've decided for today you're going to really really practice proportions. For example, that would be preferable to skipping around way too much because then you'll get the proportions really, really ingrained in you. Anyway, so let's explore one of these areas. Basic anatomy applied to your drawings. So showing off like some of the principles of like the head drawing that we've been doing on Monday. Um, like this kind of stuff could be used like freehand to create characters and, and so on. And uh, you, you've got like basically a uh, simplified guide of like uh, and facial anatomy. Like, I wouldn't use this as your anatomy reference, but this is an example of, like, kind of a, sh a storyboard artist's shorthand or a cartoonist's sh shorthand of the muscles of the face. Uh, same thing goes for these uh, noses and mouths and stuff. Like, these are examples of, like, a very, very Western-oriented um, uh, cartooning. But, I mean, the same thing applies if you, um, if you like, pull from more Eastern influences or different art style influences like these are kind of broken down simplified caricatured versions of those how those features work but yeah uh mind the body language the center of balance body language can turn your superhero into a male prostitute <laughs> yeah uh depending on his pose yeah uh yeah there's all kinds of stuff avoiding letting the eye touch such the side of the face it's a tangent tangent and works up the 3d effect you want Big eyes and foreheads even cuter. There's lots of tons of notes here. I would read this and like read the little notes that are on here. Um, bad posture and baggy clothes can make muscular character look overweight. Remember that posture is the only difference between Clark Kent and Superman. Um, yeah. And uh, you can see when we scroll down here, oh look, it's uh, some of the muscle anatomy we're gonna be getting more into in the legs stuff we're gonna be doing next week. And you can see like uh, some simplified ideas of how the leg works. Like this is going to be a handy cheat sheet for me to refer to for like kind of clearing out the noise of what we need to concentrate on for our uh, for our anatomy studies. Because like I'll have like much more detailed and accurate anatomy studies and photos to pull from. But this is kind of a oh this is what you need to remember kind of thing basically. Uh, and then we look at like more accurately drawn examples than these to uh, to copy study or whatever. Um, yeah. 
So check this out. There's this page on mastery levels. I would say that I'm somewhere around here, honestly. Like I was, I'm somewhere around between third and fourth. I would say, but uh, between I would say I'm somewhere between second and third, with a few elements of fourth for me. Um, I've got more to I've got more to practice and more to learn. Yeah, zero, first, second, third, and so on. You can see like. Uh, uh, a lot of the people here are going to want to be concentrating here. And this is a proportional kind of not a figure that's not really in 3D space. A proportional figure, uh, practicing your characters or your proportional figures, figure drawing, really understanding the proportions, the proportional structures of the figure. And then eventually you, whoops, you eventually learn how to convert that into 3D space like that. And then uh, fourth, and then like fourth, no, third mastery, um, you refine the quality of the third and you like put more dynamics in, more personality, more character, more designy elements and stuff. And fourth is where you really got a good sense of where you've done like a lot of these. And so you now you can play with it even more and push it and mess with it. I will point out that there are some, uh, some errors in these drawings, by the way, like that. There's some pretty severe one right there with the angle of that that um uh that that skirt there and uh the knee and so on but uh i mean yeah i mean it it, it, it illustrates the point but pro they probably could use better examples for the fourth mastery but in any case um to be a proficient storyboard artist you only need to work your way up to the second and third level mastery i would say that's about right because storyboard artists tend to work very rough because storyboard Storyboarding does not demand a high degree of polished draftsmanship. It does it, it demands a high degree of functional draftsmanship, which means you have to have a good understanding of composition and um, and relative volume consistency and uh, and gestural drawing and stuff. Like you don't have to refine stuff as much as like an illustrator or like a comic artist or something. Your stuff can be much rougher because you are trying to communicate an idea quickly to the rest of the crew that's going to be animating the uh, animating or if it's live action uh, filming from your storyboard. But yeah, they're talking about uh, com the importance of compiling references and so on. This is uh, all really good stuff, but in any case, that's a little bit outside the scope of what we're going to be concentrating on today. What we are going to be concentrating on today is we're going to be concentrating on this. So we're going to be walking through this. Uh, we might you know, insert a little bit of anatomy, who knows, we might we need to dip our toes in it a bit. But first thing first, we're going to concentrate on reconstructing this. And then we're going to kind of maybe play with it a little bit and try some posing. Does that sound good? Alrighty, folks, uh, I'm going to get some water in a little bit, and then we'll get started on doing this. But if you want to get started right now, uh, go ahead, uh, take this sheet, I'll re-upload it to the Discord real quick. Um, take this sheet and uh, people are very confused by the by the Goku legs on, that are on screen here, I'm sure. But yeah, take this sheet and let's see here where did I put it. There it is. Take this sheet and, and get started on it. Uh, just start Measure out the heads first off. Measure out like the head measurements here on this on the left. Um, copy paste them down and make sure that they are all like accurate and stuff with whether with a ruler or whatever kind of measurement device you have. And uh, use the heads heads as a unit of measurement to start reconstructing this. But the first things first, I want people to get started on is make a chart like this on the on the left here. Uh, heads all the way down, marking off where each of the cutoff points are. And number your heads and uh, get parallel lines uh, like that. That's the first thing I want people doing before we even start the figure. I'm going to get started on that now with all of the rest of you after I, after I come back. Can you screen on Discord? What's that? It, uh, can you please sh uh, share the entire screen on Discord because I can't see anything. What, this thing? Well, like I put, it shows only well, different I post, windows. 
it's not the same as the oh right the discord yeah okay yeah I, I haven't shifted that yet let me let me do that real fast yeah thank you yeah i know what you mean i was streaming by the app instead of the desktop screen which is this one there we go so uh we'll get started on this Uh, and keep this handy right here, this thing here. Uh, let me let me upload that specific image to ch to chat also. By the way, that's a giant image, by the way. So <laughs> let's give it a moment. But specifically, this the like this section here. Keep in mind, keep stuff in mind, and maybe scroll down a bit to like some of this stuff to kind of look at a bit. But the the, uh, the proportion chart is the main thing we're going to be concentrating on. But yeah, this would be something to, this this is something that I kind of want to, like this whole colored sec, this whole color coded section, I maybe want to print out myself. Paste up on the wall. But yeah, I'm going to get some water and hit the restroom real quick. Uh, you guys should too, but if you want to get started right away, just get started on on our buddy this thing. So let me maybe just put that in there and then I'll put There we go. That's pretty nice. All right. So I'll be right back. I've actually got a little experimental idea I just want to try with all of you here. Magma Studio, there it is. All right, so Magma Studio is a online drawing app that you can um, you can uh, collaboratively uh, draw with other people. So what I'm going to do, uh, there is a um, subform in here. Well, well, there's going to be, let's see here. So I've made a, uh, a whoops. Oh, that is a, there already is a draw pile stuff. Okay, well, I'll get rid of this, this thing though. Don't need that. So the drop house stuff is like links to a previous collab collab stuff we've done together. So I'll post a link in there uh, and people from here, try not to go crazy drawing on the, well, actually it might be a bad idea to do it today. Let's, let's, just, let's just stick to what the original plan was. But in, in, just to, you know, in the future, I want to, I want to like use Magma Studio as a potentially a um, collaborative teaching tool for these classes. We'll figure out how to do it, how to, how to use it. Like how many people do I let in? Maybe I let in some of my subscribers or something like that for doing draw over studies together or, or something or guest lectures or something, but we'll figure that out in the future. 
Um, I think it would be a little short notice and a little bit chaotic to do that right now. But that's just something to keep in mind for the future. So let's put that over here. Bring that up. Oh, also, this is a little animation that's up in the corner right here. This uh, this guy right here. I'll link him his Instagram real quick. He has really beautiful kind of vapor wavy pop art uh, animation, uh, animation work, animation and graphic design work that he's done. That he has on Instagram. Anyway, so let's take a look at this. Just copy paste this into the drawing app also, because why not? All right, so what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be replicating this. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, in fact, it should be kind of janky because we're going to be like carefully walking through doing this and trying to get it like fairly, fairly right. Um, let's get that over there. There we go. That's good. And um, that's not right, is it? Here, I'm just, I'm just like setting up the windows here. There we go. All right, so. Let's see, the view, where's the ruler? There's the ruler, okay, good. All right, so first off, I'm gonna establish what my, what my head is for this. Let's get about 50%, I would say, somewhere in there, yeah. So we're gonna use the Loomis head measurements for this. So I'm doing a little in a quick ellipse. And uh, then, like, bottom of the nose would be about, like, here. Like, where the sides of the head. So we uh, the way the Loomis head works is, like, there is a, you do an ellipse, and then inside of the ellipse, uh, a cir another ellipse that's, like, two-thirds the size of the, uh, uh, that's, like, two-thirds the size of the original ellipse. That, and that is, like, the side plane of the head, basically. So like uh, there'd be like the jaw here or something if this was like, like in profile or whatever. But um, we're not doing profile, we're doing straight on. So like my ellipses are gonna be on these sides right here. And like normally like we chop off the sides, but I'm not gonna be chop off the sides right here. But I'm just gonna be using them for, for measurement to create my basic head. So now we know this, that we know about roughly about like, this is one third right there of the face. So we copy another one third right here for like where the hairline is about. And then we get another one third. Just about, I think it's a little bit higher than that. Let's put it about here. Then we get another one third down here for like the bottom of the jaw or so. And we're not going for a perfect head. We just want something that's kind of in the ballpark of like the proportions of a head. And uh, just for, and like, um, so now we got a head that's like a unit of measurement. And to further divide this, since there are like facial divides that are going on the page on the right, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna, this is my head, this is my unit of measurement of one head right here. So one H. And uh, about halfway, the halfway point is about here-ish. That's where the eye line is, right there. One half, right there. One half head, one half H. So there we go. We've got our basic unit of measurement right here. Now lower opacity on it real quick. And I'm gonna do a quick Draw over. Let's use a different pen. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay.
So nose line is about here. We're getting a proportionate head right now. Uh, one of the reasons why uh, it's a good idea to start learning head drawing early on when you're learning figure drawing is because you use the head as a unit of measurement. And so since we understand like the basic proportions of how to construct a face through like the Loomis method that we were doing on Monday, um, we now have the ability to create a, you know, a reasonably proportionate head. It's not going to be the best drawn head because we're not really going for that this evening. We're just trying to get a tool and practice a tool that we use at, that we that's going to be like in the back of our heads to remember having walked through making this tool. So if we were going to go further with this, we'd be working on like the proportions of the, of the features of the lower face, but we're not, but that's kind of out, kind of outside the scope of the chart on the right. So I'm not going to worry about that right now. But right now I have my basic head. And uh, so for clarity's sake, I'm going to take a, take this line. Let's see here. I'm going to create a couple parallel lines right here, like about where like exactly the top and the bottom of the head are supposed to be. And then I'll just merge that into this. There we go. And I duplicate this. So that's my starting like little scaffolding piece. I'm gonna take this and I, wow, that's a really, I'm trying really small on this page. I might wanna like crop this the stuff that I'm doing on this page later for when I upload it to uh, my Patreon. But I'll keep working on this, on this giant ass page for now. So let's see here. All right, so there's my basic unit of head measurement right there. And now I'm just going to duplicate that eight times. Duplicate. Just make sure that that little line lines up. Zoom in a little bit. There we go. Yeah, that's pretty close. Let's merge these two now. Or actually, I'm going to keep a spare back up real quick. I'm going to duplicate this one. I'm going to move that over there as like a spare kind of clean backup in case I need to do, do things with this again. And let's see here. Let's keep things a little organized. So I'll put scaffold head right there for this. There we go. Put that one in there too. There we go. That's all grouped nicely now. So now these I'm going to merge. Select layers, duplicate. Now I'm going to merge. Duplicate. There we go. Merge layers. There we go. Now we got one, two, but now we got eight heads. So with that in mind, I'm going to create Head units. Eight head units. There we go. And I'm going to put in eight head numbers. There we go. So I'm creating a layer that I'm going to be putting the head numbers on. Just for reference. This will help me keep track of the proportions that I'm going to. Let's put them on their, in their foreheads. One, two, three, four. They're kind of looking like bad guys from a Power Rangers series now. Like the Mook bad guys or whatever from those. 
Like the ponies. Yeah. Let's see storyboard. Yeah, there we go. It's not the demo, the class demos. Let's see here. Today is not the eighth. Today, oh, you know that today is the eighth. What? I think I might have messed up some dates. Well, nevertheless. I'll save it in there. All right, so now we got this. And uh, now let's further break down the measurements. Let's see, like use, let, let's copy what kind of Kevin Chan does in our own way here. Uh, like to make that like a really ni nice, clean, concise uh, measuring tool that we have for our proportional figures. So there we go, we got one half right there. And then let's see here. Actually, no, I want to make a new. So let's do measure break down one. So that's a new layer. Do that. I'm going to put on some music in a little bit. I just want to get like this chart started a little ways. There we go. So we'll make little notes here. Also, just like how he has it on his chart. Uh, but first, I'm going to make sure that we draw the lines out here that I need. Oops. That's a lot long, longer than I need, but uh, yeah, I'll chop this off, actually. That's a little bit crazy. All right, so just duplicate this and do the same thing. That I did with the heads. some music believe it or not this is actually DMCA free home resonance So now that we got this, let's go with labels. Oh, 
cables there. Chin. Nips. Eye. Knee. Needle. Bottom of pelvis. And this is a mind you, this is they're using they have an eight and a half eight and a half proportion system right here, but they're using a seven and a half head proportion. So uh the upper leg bone just short of two heads like this. It's good to know. Yeah, the bottom of the feet are going actually like Seven and a half would be about here. So the proportions are going to be a little odd compared to the measurement here. So like that's I think that's about that's about a quarter, isn't it? Or is that a third? That's about a third, I think, where the bottom of the feet are. So now we're going to reconstruct a human figure using the measurements that Kevin Chen has provided for us. This fig these figure does not have to be the best drawn figure ever. Uh, the point of doing this is to start to internalize, um, internalize proportions. So figure okay, that. So the first things first, we need a head. So we happen to have a spare backup head over here that I saved just for this occasion. So duplicate this, bring it out of the folder here. Let me just make a new folder here of the previous. So put this over here. There we go. And now, let's create a new layer. And so the, um, First unit of measurement we're going to keep in mind is the width of the shoulders, and that is going to be the measurement of two heads. So we duplicate that. We have the meet about halfway right here, the center of the face. And let's get a uh, measurement line now. Right straight down to the bottom, or wherever the bottom is. It's right there. Good. So that's our center line now. And now, we take the widest point on the left and the right side. Actually, no, we don't even have to do that. We need to duplicate. Do that. Move the line over. About here. Duplicate. Move the line over. Down here. So then we got two heads wide. And uh, I'm going to deviate slightly from Kevin Chen's thing because I'm making this also as a guide for myself to use in the future. So I'm going to lower the opacity on those, and those will be in the background there for me to remind me about how wide that is. And mind you, the center line isn't perfect. I think, like, in fact, let, let's check. Let's check to see how how I got the proportions by eyeballing it real quick. Because it's, it's tricky for me to tell, especially because I'm drawing at a weird angle and I'm drawing on really limited drawing space here. So we got that. I'll just move this over. 
use that little red line that I made as a measuring device to see how wide this little area is. Eh, it's a little bit off, but it's not enough to really matter that much. So I think it's good. All right. So now next step, um, we're going to start. Now that we got this kind of vertical measurement width going on from, uh, from top to bottom, uh, let's see how that gets utilized in this. So we're going to take a look at this. We got two heads wide width between the shoulders. Those are used to measure the corners of the tops of the shoulder right there. Uh, so now we got to we got we got to go back and figure out about where like that's going to be placed horizontally. From what I can see, it's about it's a, either a third or a quarter of the way down. Um, it's not too far off from the pit of the neck. It's like a little bit higher than the pit of the neck. I'm going to say that's about a third down, third or a quarter. But yeah. Um, and let's see, uh, the sides of the hips are also the other important part where we use the two heads wide rule to uh, to measure out where those are. Those are going to be, yeah, a quarter right there. It's a quarter down, that's a quarter head. So that's a quarter length. In that case, that's probably a quarter length too. So we can probably extrapolate like a quarter length or something like that up there as well as down here. So let's do that real quick. Let's uh, make a little quarter, let's make a little thirds and quarter length measurements of these box units here. So I'm gonna use a little red line here. And no, 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 I need to let's see. Red line here, then let's see. There, then. Now I check this by moving it down. It's a little off. So. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty close. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect after all. But I've got a half unit of measurement now out of this a half unit of measurement tool now that I can use for this. So I make a little marker there. Half, half. And then I'm going to kind of eyeball a quarter. Quarter. Yeah, we can get the idea. And then um, an eighth. There we go. Now we got a little measuring device right there. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little measuring tool for thirds. So I'll do this. I'm going to try to try to eyeball it, I guess. Like maybe like about, I want to say here would be about, so that's a quarter. Third would probably be about, I want to say here-ish, but we'll see. That needs to come down a little bit further, I'd say. So, so. This is not terribly exciting because it's just like dry figure measurements, but you really need, do need to do this and take it seriously to kind of internalize it. 
And this uh, this is something I'm going to be going I'm going through step by step with you guys all because I need to refresh it myself. Yeah, it needs to come down further. So up there, maybe. Yeah, it's a bit off now. It's, it's a little bit off, but I'm just going to kind of... Yeah, I'll adjust it a bit. But I'll do it by eyeballing without being too exact. Just move that up a little. Um, I just want like a basic unit of measure... A basic like... In the ballpark unit of measurement here for this. I'll label that as imperfecto because I think that's an imperfect tool. And if it proves to be a problem, I'll just make it. I'll try to see if I can make a more accurate one. But uh, this is going to be my unit of thirds and sixths measurement. Third, one third, one third. Um, one six, one six, one six. All right, there's my little units of measuring for the individual head breakdowns. So now, um, so we know where the bottom of the chin is. Uh, the tops of the shoulders are about roughly a quarter down. So let's see here. That would come from about here, wouldn't it? So, get a new line. I'll keep this one red. Actually, no, I'll keep it, yeah, keep it red. Um, they'll be coming from here, across there. Oops. A little bit far, wasn't it? <laughs> like that much, at least. So now we know where the two landmarks of the neutral shoulders are at the moment. So, put a little dot there. A little dot there, where it intersects right there with the two head width. Um, next thing, uh, let's make a little note here. Just kind of eyeball it a bit. Like, pit of the neck is going to be a little bit further down. It's about here-ish. Well, actually, no. Let's let's hold off on that. Let's let's actually put the pit of the neck here instead, so we can keep things more on model with accurate measurement. And then we'll kind of like say that you can you can sort of eyeball adjust the to the corners of the shoulders a little bit higher on the page. And I'll just make a little note of that. So the neck, because the important thing is getting like the measurement of the chest area right, and so we want, we want to stick a bit wrong because uh, I guess he used the uh, one thirds measurements to point out this line. Oh, did he? Yeah, the one third measurement on the um, on the chest. You mean? I mean, 
where one he's third. Doing, you know, yeah, you're right. Point. One third. That looks a little bit like more of a like a quarter, just from eyeballing it there. But I think you're right. Yeah, thank you for pointing that out. So we'll do that. Eight. So same deal, but we'll do a third down and make a little note there. And that probably, uh, and if it's wrong, we can always just go go back and fix it. All right. So now we got a little uh, little measurement thing. And uh, next thing I would say, I'm going to use a little red line to go down from here to the halfway point, right there. This little red line drawn over the top here. So it stands out. So we see the chest area because we're going to be working on the chest area now. Oops. We need a new, need a new layer for that. Okay. That's about where the pit of the crotch is going to be. And the nipple line is going to be here. The nipple line is going to be here. And then I think the next important part, part to work on, I'm going to start actually with the hips down here. So let's take our thirds rule of measurement, our, our thirds measurement device over here. i duplicate one of those, grab it, and bring it down here to where I need it. So I need it here. Just about. So From here, we're going to take our first third right there, and then draw across there. And this is the this is where the top of the pelvis is. Then uh, the next third. This is where the insertion point, roughly, is of for the uh, the socket of the hips. Just about. You can see what you can see right there, uh, where Kevin's noted it. Let me put on some more music. Royalty free. Let me know if the music competes with my audio too much. By the way. Are heads certain size like an inch? Uh, not really. Uh, I mean, you can use it. You can use an inch as a unit of measurement for this if you like. It's up to you. Um, I'm using a head. My head is a unit of measurement for proportions. It's not a particular size. Because like these same proportions would apply to somebody who's six foot high versus seven foot high or something. You know, it's same proportions of the body basically. Uh, but yeah, like your breakdown of the heads should be kind of what I did where um, yeah, you start with a sphere, another sphere, in, uh, another circle inside the sphere roughly measurement about like two thirds the size of the, the two thirds of the width of the sphere. And that creates your side planes of the head, which you can then use to find the nose line in relation to the halfway point of the brow line. That's your first third, and then you use thirds down the front to find the hairline point right here and the bottom of the chin. Now you have your, your unit of measurement of a head. And uh, you, you use this like using a sphere to find the width originally. The sphere that you kind of somewhat chop the sides off of, basically. All right, so I'm gonna walk through like the rest of the scaffolding on this because like the actual drawing part is gonna be like really easy to go through once we have like the, all the scaffolding in place. 
So let's get all like the rest of the measurements of like the boring parts in, in place first before we get the actual like figure drawing in. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure, I'm going to try to be thorough about this. Uh, let's do a further breakdown of the chest area. So taking the, that's the bottom of the pelvis, yeah, that's the bottom of the pelvis. Taking the pit of the, taking from the bottom of the pelvis, pit of the crotch area right here. We come out over to the, oops. We come out over to the right here. And then, gonna make little notes about units, the units of measurement here. And let's see, let's take a look. So, hit of neck and of sternum and of rib cage. Wait, that's not that's not what it is at all, is it? So I'll leave that first label up. So I need to break this down into fourths. This whole thing needs to be broken down into fourths, independent of the other the other stuff I did. So let's figure that out. Take this unit of measurement, put it down here, that is off. Take this, move it down a little bit. That is pretty close. All right, so get rid of this. And now I'm ready to go. I'm getting this right. So I need to further divide these areas into halves. So I wanna say this should be here. And now let's do a little bit of measuring and get this right. Look a little bit long, so I'll scoot that in a bit. Oops, it's like two thirds. It's the same as the black line that is already drawn. Oh, goody. Yeah, yeah. I'm not mathematically minded right now, so I'm just manually measuring everything out. <laughs> I could probably just use the unit of measurements I, I made earlier. So it is actually using that, huh?
Yeah, it's a little bit off down below, but we'll just eyeball the rest. So, all right, so we have something in the ballpark now. For our unit of measurement on the side here. So this is going to be sternum. Or end of sternum rather. End of rib cage. Rest of Plevis bottom of Plevis. I can help reorder everyday items, track what? the deliveries, add to your shop. Alexa, ladies. shut up. Jesus Christ. I'm unplugging you if you keep that, if you keep doing that during my classes. Because Google never does that shit. Alright, so. Let's see, I'm gonna keep this a little bit better organized. I'm gonna put them all in here. Alright, now. So we got thirds at about like uh, six head high. We got a thirds measurement for like about where the uh, change in the direction of the knee is. So I'm gonna grab one of those real quick, the imperfecto thirds. Take that down to the sixth. Put that there. And I think the other one down below is also a thirds for the feet. Take that, duplicate, move that down there to the feet. Oh, I just noticed the uh, he does not go into the proportions of the arms, but um, and the arms are at a kind of a strange angle here to be able to measure from. But we can we can take what he did and we can tilt ahead and then find the measurements that we need. So we'll do that when we get to that. Uh, but generally speaking, like the, um, the fingers are going to end, they're like the wrist is going to end somewhere around the pit of the crotch and the fingers are going to end like somewhere below the pit of the crotch, somewhere around like, I think about right there is fine, honestly. But yeah, um, so now we'll just walk through creating the, the main part of the figure using the measurements we brought. Take a blue line. I'm just going to start sketching using the measurements that I got. So I got two kind of C-curved lines right here going down to the pit of, pit of the neck on either side. Um, angled line going over to here. We're about where the about where like the top of the shoulder is, just slightly above the little plot point that we made earlier. Pit of the neck right there, which is an anatomical landmark along with the the corners of the shoulders there. This is the collarbone right here. Uh, we're not going into anatomical accuracy here, but the collarbone normally is shaped kind of like a bicycle handlebar And it's a little bit more complex than what Kevin drew here He's done like a really very simplified figure compared to like Something more anatomical we, we, we would do if we were doing torso anatomy practice today Anyway So next thing we can do is like this like what you're seeing here is that's kind of like the muscles of the rib cage going outside of the rib cage. So like this is this is about we we would be where the bones would end, the black lines on either side there. So um, 
gonna kind of eyeball it a bit. So we got these little curves there. The bottom of the rib cage is gonna come to about third down here or so. And then we get this kind of egg-shaped thing going up, going up in here, up where the pit of the neck is. Let's see, the navel is going to be right here. And the rest of the pelvis is going to be here. With that in mind, I think my rib cage is a little short. So I think it would actually be about. I think the bottom of the rib cage would probably be about here. I'm kind of guesstimating here because he's not really. He hasn't really marked. Oh, yeah, he has. I'm sorry. You have a mark at the end of the rib cage. Silly me. It's right here. Trying to eyeball the stuff that I had just done like in, in like intense measurements for. <laughs> End of the sternum. Right there. It's also where the nipple line is, it looks like. Then we get this kind of like sloping effect here with the going down the external obliques. And you might remember like this kind of shape, like the dish of the pelvis from our Wednesday class right here. You know, the pit of the crotch and the groin of a male, the crungus down below here. It's his dang old dangus. So one one of the little notes here you can see on like how he's kind of like done some rhythm lines through the body. Uh, one of them is like kind of a rally method rhythm where you take the top corners of the shoulders. And then like you draw these kind of curved rhythm lines down towards the pit of the crotch. And then there's the same thing with like sides of the neck. And those go down to about the same level as the pit of the crotch right here. And they they help describe like the hips and the external obliques a bit. Uh, one thing one thing to keep in mind is the elbow is usually going to be, like, the elbow is usually going to be about like, a, uh, about like where the bottom of the rib cage is. Maybe you can actually physically see it if you if you like stand up against your body. You can kind of see. You can sort of visualize like your wrist is going to be about where like about close to where your the pit of your crotch is about there, and your hand extends a little further down than your your, your genitals. Um, oh, and uh, we know how we know roughly about how. How big your hand would be proportionally. Your hand is going to be from uh, from bottom of the wrist to your t the tip of your longest finger. It's going to be about like the length of like from your hairline on your face to your chin. You can actually feel it if you put if you put your your um, the bottom of your wrist and your uh, your longest finger your min your middle finger on the, on the your forehead. If you're able to compress your hand completely on your on your nose then uh you'd be able to see you'd be able to see like that's roughly about the proportion is so we know what the proportion of the hand is we could take a unit of the head and then 
about here. There. There's a hand. There's about where a hand's gonna be. Kevin didn't include it in this thing for like how how many proportional measurements specifically each section of the arm is, sadly, but we can kind of infer it a bit. So for the knees, um, about what Kevin has there. So the top of the knee would be about here, bottom of the knee, somewhere around, bottom of the kneecap, somewhere around there. So that's like about what the kneecap is going to be positioned, I would say. So this goes slightly outside, that little limiter line. About here is where the joint of the hip would be connecting. And then it goes further down to the thigh there. Down here. So yeah, I mean, like, that's pretty much, like, the general proportions of the body now. Like, following Kevin Chen's guide, at least. There's more to break it down into. Like, we, he doesn't go over fully on the, on the arms and stuff. But you can kind of, like, like, like I said, like, the, the elbow joint is going to be about where the bottom of the rib cage is. The wrist is going to be about where the crotch is. Your, your, the length of your hand is roughly about this long. And he, you notice he uses about like um, four heads for like the length of the legs and that includes like the joint that connects up to the hips on the seven and a half head figure. And for completely sake, I'm just going to sketch in the other arm. Like, we're not going for perfection here. This is just like a general walkthrough understanding of the proportions of the figure, because the next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be trying to apply some of these proportions to some um, sketch practice using some of the, uh, some of the stuff from tonight's, uh, tonight's handouts and some other things that I have. But yeah, this is a, a general sketch of the general proportions of, uh, of a generic figure, the generic seven and a half head tall figure. So we were doing the four head system, which he has here. The, this is the two third head system right here that he's using. Good for accurate structure bone strength playing. Good to simply in the body, yeah. So there's more than just that, but this is like we mostly use this on the left here and then we use some breakdowns of the um of the portions of the chest. Uh generally speaking, for the proportion uh, some other some other general observations uh to make it yeah, let me just get like a different colored line here maybe. I'll just throw, let's say, like everything. Portion. Figure. 
I throw everything into that folder. Just make sure I save a backup of this first. There we go. All right, so a few things to note about like general proportions for a figure. Like generally speaking, like the um, the pit of the crotch is usually uh, or somewhere around here is like usually the halfway point for the figure, but not always. Like if you're using that, if you're using an eight heads tall figure system, that that's definitely what's going to shake out as. Uh, but all that really happens when you're using like a seven and a half head high figure is you would adjust about where the crotch is. Like it's going to be a little bit higher or something on this for the halfway point. Um, but that's like something to keep in mind. But now that now that you know like what the proportions are, you can do imperfect um, sketching, kind of inventing with like here, like I've done like a little head here, it's a little quickie head. I'm gonna say that this head is my unit of measurement for a figure that has these proportions. So I'm gonna kind of like do a quick gestural pose here. So I know, oh, um, this head is, uh, I'm, so I'm kind of eyeballing it, like, oh, that, this head, uh, we've got like about roughly about four heads down there for this character that's kind of standing here. And I got another four heads down here, something like that. Since I'm going to be making it like a seven and a half head figure, let's put the, I'll place the feet like there or so. And now I just kind of sketch around with it a bit. I keep in mind the proportional rules of the figure. In fact, let's blow this up. Let's blow this guy up a little bit. So you could do like gesture drawings that are like, eh, the proportions aren't going to be perfect, but the proportions are going to be like in the ballpark a little bit more than they would be uh, if you had, if you didn't know about these rules. So now that you understand these perspective rules, I mean, what am I saying? Perspective rules. Now, now that you understand these these general proportion rules, you can start. The point is to now have them in the back of your head as you're sketching freely, or as you correct a figure that you've done a drawing of. Uh, and the way in like the way that you can use it, like say if you if you're doing foreshortening, for example, uh, you just like. Pretend you like uh, kind of pretend like um, Say for example that thigh which is going to be from the hip unit out here. It's going to be about two heads. You just imagine like you Imagine like two heads kind of like stacked on top of each other tilted back in space For that cylinder shape of the thigh That's coming towards you or whatever Then you get like, if you need to, you, on these sketches and stuff, you can make little diagrams of like, quick sort of like, proportional measurements of the limbs and so on. Like, let's see here, for example, like, I'd say that the, um, the upper arm is going to be about like, the, the upper arm on uh, the body is going to be, let's actually measure it real quick, like, so we got this. 
Okay, the upper arm is about one and a half head in length. Uh, the lower arm, forearm is the same length, roughly, as the upper arm. And then you add the hand onto it. And we know what the hand measurement is. It's from the, the whole length of the hand is from the hairline of the head to the bottom of the chin. So we essentially have four units of heads for the whole arm, plus like the front of that. No, 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 three, three units of heads for the whole length of the arm, plus like the uh, the front of the face for the for the wrist to the um, to the middle fingertip. So with that in mind, you can kind of like infer sort of like, oh, I got a head and about a half a head there. You can sort of measure it to like where the bottom of the rib cage is with like swinging the arm out and stuff. And uh, then you can kind of play with the same foreshortening ish, foreshortening rules and stuff of where stuff is tilted. Um, you, the point is to like keep referring back to these proportional rules as like a, to internalize the cheat sheet, basically. And uh, and keep and like keep adjusting your proportions when you're doing quick sketch and stuff like it you don't have to worry about like bang up perfect proportions most of the time but you want to like have enough of an understanding of them so that when you're like kind of doing quick sketches they're not too far off the mark because they can always be adjusted later and certainly for storyboard artists like maintaining relatively in the ballpark volumes is pretty important of your characters uh, and that means that also means keeping track of the proportions you know, in, with relative consistency for TV storyboards especially like in action shows and stuff um, let's see here but we can take like uh, let's say like I'm, I'm gonna grab like a figure on Pinterest and we can we can sh we can see physically how these how like these proportion guides work. Like let's see if I can find a let's see if I can find a fairly well posed clear figure to use. Like I'll use like a couple standing poses or maybe some like battle poses or something like. Let's see, these are some really good ones on here, so let's look through here. But I want to go with some clear poses first. That's a pretty good one. Let's play your generic uh, Jedi cosplay pose. So let's take this. And we'll apply some of the um, proportional stuff to this to understand this a little bit. And then we'll take this, um, we'll take this uh, Force Awakens cosplay, and um, then we'll maybe try like sketching some stuff using a shorthand version of uh, this character and uh, put them in different poses using the proportional knowledge that we have. So we know that this is the unit of the head, right, like right there, there's like the front of the head. It's kind of pitching itself back into space a bit. But this is generally kind of the unit of the head, sort of. So we kind of, we know like, um, well, first off, let's do like the line of action through the whole figure right here. But like, here is a foreshortened arm in 3D space. We got, like, we got about Excuse one and me. a half head or we so. We cannot see. We cannot see in, in this bird what you are doing. Really? Yeah. Hmm. What happened? You can't. I know. I, I only see the heads. You only see the what? Uh, for me, the stream froze, so I just stopped watching and then watched it. 
Oh, okay. Well, let me let me try restarting it here. So working now? Yeah. 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 I think I'm actually gonna lower the. Whoops. Gonna lower the uh, stream quality to let's say 15 FPS, 720. That I might help with some of the bitrate issues. Because I'm trying to like stream two things at the same time right now. But anyway, so like we got about one and a half heads for that the head length of that arm, which is a cylinder connected up to the torso. Um, we got like the corners of the tops of the shoulders there, the pit of the neck. About there. And remember to keep this stuff in mind. Look at that. Just keep referring back to the. Keep your referring back to this this thing. Pretty much. Actually, here. Let me. Um, let's see here. New window. There we go. I can move that here. That'll do. All right, it's two two separate windows on the same file now, pretty much, which is a nice little thing you can do in Clip Studio. Uh, all right, so so that this uh, forearm is foreshortened away from us a little bit, so it's going to be a little bit shorter than the one and a half head for this forearm uh, from the elbow here. The elbow joint right there with the cylinder of the arm right there. Um, so we just we just keep it in mind in 3D space like two heads kind of stacked up one and a half like one and a half heads stacked on top of each other about like there for that length. And same thing here this is like this is pretty out there actually. So this is almost parallel to us, so that one's going to be like pretty close to like straight on one and a half head, right there. And then this forearm is heavily foreshortened, so it's scrunched down to almost be like a half a head length. And of course these hands are wrapping over stuff, but like if they were straightened out and tilted away from the camera that he'd be doing something like this. Be a little shorter than the than the length of the face. So these little calculations you can keep in mind when you're like like constructing your figure. And it'll help you make adjustments. Like you're not gonna be not necessarily gonna get per perfect proportions with every drawing every time, but like understanding these rules will let you make those adjustments and know what you're doing, basically. And uh, as you start getting more intuitive with them, you start developing an eye for like what looks off. So when you're just sketching, uh, you have a better sense of of, uh, of when stuff is looking off or right. So if you notice what I'm doing here, I'm kind of using this as a me using like the feet as a means to kind of place sort of little perspective grid kind of thing going on. Feet, of course, are like perpendicular to what an actual like perspective, like real perspective grid would be. But using these, I can start to kind of like infer a little bit of a vanishing point. This is just a quick sketch study, so I'm not really worried too too much about like getting accurate placement of stuff. But so these would be a little bit perpendicular there. But yeah, um, accurate placement of the grid or whatever. But yeah, like, uh, so this thigh here, this whole leg here is pretty straight on to us, so. And the torso is even, even though the torso is kind of curving right here, uh, it's pretty close to the measurements of our unit. So I'm just gonna extrapolate that a little bit. We know the navel is going to be about 
from there to So end of the rib cage, somewhere around here. Um, navel about here, I want to say. So about there will be the unit of the measurement, actually. Bottom of the pelvis. Not here, so gonna make some serious adjustments to my little portion brought rid thing. So, so the length of the of the from the bottom of the kneecap to the bottom of the foot is going to be about roughly two heads. And the thigh from from like the connecting joint point about here-ish, to the bottom of the kneecap, just about here. It's going to be another two heads, just about. That means, like, extrapolating this on this other side, because this is, like, the insertion point of this hip joint is going behind the hips. This thigh that's also at a different angle from us, it's going a little bit away from us, but it's, we can still infer like roughly about two heads-ish for its total length, I would say. Let's see if the measure, how much that measurement holds up. Yeah, there's a little foreshortening difference because the the leg is tilted a little, the calf and the lower leg is tilted a little bit towards us. But this is about, this is pretty close to, yeah, it's a little under, but it's pretty close to about two heads. Like, just two heads stacked on top of each other that are tilted slightly towards us, kind of like that. So if we lower opacity on this thing, or actually now here, I'll just take another version of this. Now that we kind of have a little bit of a better understanding of this figure, we can go back through on this and uh, try to extrapolate like something like kind of a working character puppet uh, based on this figure. Uh, I'm gonna omit like a lot of the detail on her, but here. Light running ink. Rough. Do I want to use rough or lighter ink? I want to use... I think I want to use G-Pen for this. Yeah. Alright, so... I'm going to keep it loose. The angle of her head is kind of tilted down a bit. We can see more of the top plane of her head. Got these tilted counterposed hips right here that feed into the thigh. 
following that line of that lovely line of action down to the knee joint here and boots so what I'm hoping to get out of this character right here I'll show you in a little bit so I want to make a generic puppet model that I can use that I can put into different poses and we'll walk through a few of them tonight But tomorrow, um, we're going to continue with what we have done tonight. And we're going to be placing a, a, a figure like this into 3D spaces and creating scenes and, comp and storyboard compositions using, figure using these figures. What time is it? It is pretty close to being done. I'm going to make sure that we... Um, I'm going to make sure that we... Uh, Spend a little time inventing a few figures here with her. So let's see, maybe I can find some sword fight images to pull from to use her. But first, I'm going to draw a quick shorthand character version of her, like a storyboard artist version of her. Well, here, let me actually show you the flooby newbie thing and what it has to say about how we'll be drawing these. So what we're going for is something about like this simple. Like or, or uh, something like, like really, really simple. Like we want, uh, we want a character that has like the proportions in mind that of uh, the kind of figurative character design that we've done, but we want something that's really gestural and simple so like something like this like this following the flow and the gesture but keeping it like relatively in the ballpark We get that nice hip tilt there, shoulder tilt. Go punch the head up a bit. And it's inherently going to be pretty sketchy, and that's fine for this because we're just trying we're just trying to go for like the feeling of it. See, there's a few things I'm going to adjust on this. There's this feeling of strong stability in her shoulders that we want to push slightly. But yeah, now that we kind of have like a general idea of her body and stuff, we can start sort of playing with it in a little more simpler terms. Like, Do live drawing poses help in this case? What's that? Uh, I've said do live drawing poses uh, help in this case? Yes, very much so. Because like uh, the ultimately the characters that you are designing for anything you're doing are, 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 are not, you're not doing a copy of a cartoon character. 
to create your character, you are um, referencing light and like pulling from light to create a character. You can learn how to cartoon stuff by studying existing cartoons, uh, but it's like copying a cheat sheet without understanding the the underlying stuff. Uh, I mean, it's great to learn from, and it'll help. It'll help you kind of uh, learn how to put things together in pleasing ways and uh, certain techniques and so on. But you you do have to touch touch base with reality a lot. Like you want to understand where the weight in a pose is, and uh, ultimately, like when you are cartooning, you are going to be creating based on reality. So. I'm starting to see I'm starting to get some ideas of what I can do for like potentially making a generic storyboard puppet figure of this character like it doesn't have to be anything complex like I can just use like simple simple like quick shapes that I can draw so I've invented this pose here it's just a generic pose because I'm just starting to get used to kind of playing with this puppet a little bit. But this is like the kind of stuff that you'll see like during, especially during like rough thumbnail passes and storyboards. Or even sometimes on like really dynamic storyboards you might see drawings about this rough. But like now that you now that you've like understood like the um now that you've walked through like proportions a little bit you can start to kind of play with things a little bit more you just keep you just keep those proportions in mind when you're making your invented figures and so tomorrow is going to be a continuity of what we've done today but we'll be doing a combination of more of this Kind of stuff that I'm showing on with like more kind of gestural approach where you you're inventing uh, inventing poses with a relatively proportionate character yeah but you're placing that you're gonna be placing them in 3d spaces with uh, shot composition in mind. Yeah, check this out. This is a great page uh, from Grizz and Norm that really shows off what you can kind of do. With like, this is a character right here that has particular proportions that Grizz and Norm have decided on to use for these these little studies and stuff. So they did a uh, a sheet with a bunch of uh, ones uh, with a bunch of like uh, different poses of the character with different attitude to help define who they are and stuff. For this, like you can do pages like this exploring a character personality. And uh, play with the play with the character and the posing. Yes, more little guidelines for storyboarding. Oh yeah, here's a principle to keep in. Here's the, some other principles to keep in mind. Don't focus on the outer lines of a drawing. That um, you want to focus. Don't be afraid to be messy with the drawing. The sketch is only the first step to finish drawing. Work loose, make mistakes, show confidence. He's like, work stuff up and push things. Your first attempt is never the last. Don't be afraid to sketch fast. Be loose, be messy. Take advantage of the obscure shapes. Discover the action in your line work. Do not rely on the eraser. Continue again and again to find your comfort zone. Take benefits from mistakes and you will help strengthen your ideas. Sketching is part of, uh, part of the drawing, be free. On that note, uh, there's, I'm going to be getting like more into shape with that sort of thing, but there's a few things that I that I can pull from from previous class demos that kind of show off some of the stuff. Here's like a 
He was like a rough, very rough character puppet based on uh, Glenville Pooh stuff. That would be handy for doing those kinds of studies. Uh, let's see. Here is a drawing I did for a Secret Santa thing before I took a before I took the holiday drawing break. Well, oh, what the hell? Why does it not let me do that? Fuck. Oh, yeah, it's because the keyboard is fucking up again. Duh. Okay. Alright, so... This was a kind of like a flowy... This was like a flowy sketch. I didn't really like super go for super finish with this. Uh, I like threw some quick colors and glowy stuff on it. But like you can see like on the... Uh, there's like under sketch stuff here. Of me kind of put... Me kind of doing exactly like this sort of thing. There's a bunch of other previous stuff I made in this world before I pushed the shapes and played with the flow of the, the character here. Um... Let's see. Yeah, there's that guy. I did more kind of playing with uh, playing with shapes and stuff for this sort of impromptu character, uh, impromptu creature design I did for for fun in the Discord. You see, that I, I think I actually have the um, the walk cycle animation I did with this guy. I think that's it there. It's either that or that. What? Okay, straight up this it's straight up like not letting me select stuff in Clip Studio. That's really annoying. going on with this like I can't I can't select anything in Clip Studio right now it's just like fucking fucking up major yeah I can't I can't pick fucking hell so annoying Alright, so let me maybe just cl try closing the whole thing. That might work. Sorry about this, folks. <laughs> having th we're having experiencing technical difficulties. Lovely. Uh, this was by one of the people in the class doing a... Uh, he's got a good grasp of anatomy Zov. Very, very nicely done Zov. So I was showing off the studies of anatomy also that he's been doing, which is very nice. Yes. Um, I cannot close this. I cannot fucking close anything in here. I'm gonna have to maybe... Yes, it's doing like a weird not responding thing. This is gonna be a drag because it means that like the thing's not gonna save properly or something. Yeah, when I open the program, it like stop the keyboard stops working, like mid thing. What the fuck is happening? Yeah, I'll try this real quick. Let's see if this helps. Free up some system resources. Shit. Shit, shit, shit. Well, good thing I backed it up. Uh, I backed up the file, but this is fucking annoying.
Oops, that's the anatomy leg demos. Let's see if it saved it though. Okay, well, it got this far before it like auto saved or whatever. I was in, uh, a few other stuff that I did sketches of, sadly, didn't get saved, but oh well. Um, I mean, that's what then that book that, ladies and gentlemen, is why you frequently back things up and make sure you save things. But in any case, uh, fortunately, what we lost wasn't a big deal. It was like some warm up scribbles, anyway. But uh, what I wanted to show was let's see here. Oh yeah, some of the animation demo stuff that I did last semester. Um, trying to find the most recent version of this thing. I think that one's it right there. Yeah, I think this is it. I should go back and fix and like finish this. Because there's more to do on like the body bob and, and things. For sure. Oh yeah, there's this head turn test. But yeah, in any case, like uh so kinda lost kinda kinda lost track what we were doing this evening. <laughs> a, little, a little bit there due to the technical difficulties. But anyway, we're pretty close to the end of the stream now. So what I'm going to say for folks is like, keep playing with the proportional stuff that we did tonight. Um, try playing with drawing figures in different poses, sort of using the general proportions of the figure. Go back and refer to your purport, your figure proportions and stuff. Tomorrow, 2.30 PM, we will be doing um, more. We'll, we'll be like doing a quick review of what we did with the, the, the night before. And we'll pick up basically where we left off. We'll combine what we're doing with a little bit of like storyboarding panel practice and stuff uh, tomorrow. So I'm going to call it a night here. Thank you all for thank you all so much for coming. Uh, I'll see you guys again 2:30 p.m. tomorrow. This has been warm up week, so things have been pretty wonky as we're kind of as me as I'm getting back into back into drawing shape, and I'm sort of like testing the waters of stuff. Next week is going to be quite a bit more intense. Because I'll be drawing a lot more regularly, regularly and frequently, so I'll be able to pour more energy into the classes. Um, but this week has been me coming back to doing art studies and stuff with all of you, with all of you here. So expect things to ramp up more. And one of the things that I'm looking at possibly doing in the future is a some kind of a week long um, anatomy figure study marathon of some kind. But I need to plan out what I'm going to do exactly for that so we can pace it out properly and make it a productive thing. Not like a, not an endurance challenge, but a like productive formal thing, like an anatomy cra crash course thing for all of us to do. So, um, yeah, uh, so tomorrow is going to be um, animation storyboarding practice stuff where we'll do more figures and do more practice. I'll see you then. Thank you all for coming. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye.